thank you. Um, and actually, one of the things that we have running here right t today, and hopefully you get a chance, is actually to touch some of the chains that are in the center and actually connect chains to the, others, uh, to the outside wall and create sounds and music for yourself. Because what we're involved in is actually looking at new ways of creating music. So can we actually come up with different things that you can attach to your body or touch or whatever it is and actually create sounds and music in entirely new and different ways. We're from the Sonic Arts Research Center up at Queen's University in Belfast. And at the Sonic Arts Research Center, we look at all sorts of different things of how to create sound, spatialize sound, move sounds above and below you, um, experiment with just everything you can imagine for new ways of creating music and sound. But the Muse group specifically is looking at um, how we can use the human body and the human physiology. So again, if you've had a chance um, to touch the chains in here, you actually can um, use your own body and your own body's conductance to create music. And the more you press, the more you, um, sound, uh, electricity will travel through your body, the more you're uh, emotionally active and relaxed. Um, the more you'll actually control sounds as well. So hopefully you get a chance to do that. And one more plug before I move on. Um, tomorrow, up. Uh, um, or before I destroy the system. Tomorrow we're going to actually put a Guinness Book of Records where we're going to have the longest human chain um, creating music together um, ever. So if you're here at 2 o'clock tomorrow, please come by. What are we interested in? We're looking at biosignals, um, real world sensing, and all of these different ways of getting sound and touch from your body. You've, you carry an iPod around and you shake it. Can we use that to create sound? Can we use the physiology of the body? What we're looking at in two areas, one is motion. Can we use the motion of the body to create sound? Not just the visible motion that you make, but also the invisible uh, things that you make. Like when you flex a muscle, you actually create electricity that occurs inside your arm. The question is, can we use that electricity to control sound so that you're just standing there, you're flexing your muscle, and you have a way of controlling and, uh, and manipulating sound? Can we use your emotional state? Can you, if you're happy or if you're sad, if you're laughing, can we use that emotional state to ha somehow manipulate music? And can you use that in performance as well? So this is some of the things that we're actually looking at. Um, and how would we measure emotion? One of the ways is actually measuring the skin impedance on your hands. And so even in the chains that you'll touch here in the, in the tent, you're actually going to be using your emotion to actually control sound there as well. So that's um, called electrodermal activity. What we're looking at here is a new way of creating sound by bypassing normal physical gestures. So actually just thinking sad, being sad, being happy, you're going to bypass physical gestures and actually create sound directly from that way. And here's another question. Can we use you guys out there, the audience, to manipulate sound? So when you're going to one of the concerts here, could we use your emotional state as you sit there and, and actually have that control the sound that you're playing as well? And so we've actually we developed lots of different technologies to do this, um, all the way from the crazy and wild to some very, very simple bands. Um, and actually on um, the 16th of this month, you'll see performances actually going on where the people will be wearing these bands and other things to control sound. But as I mentioned, one of the interesting things is can we use um, the audience's emotional state? Can we hook your chairs up out there and actually get you to somehow in some way interact with, with music and sound during the performance? And so one of the things that we're doing is running experiments to really know how much, what's going on with you right now? How much is your emotion changing? Um, and can we figure out what that is, run those experiments, and then somehow use that to, to modify the sound as well? And so we're running one experiment at the Science Gallery. Yeah, we're running this experiment in the Science Gallery where, where we are actually trying to find out what is the connection between music and the, how the body reacts to music. So what we're doing is having these stations where people sit in and they listen. Here's a, a small video that shows you that. And people, while they're listening to music, we're recording what their actual like skin uh, conductance reacts to it and the heartbeat. And we're gathering this amazing amount of uh, data that we'll then analyze and see if we can like correlate or do a, do a connection, a relationship between uh, the music and how your body reacts to it. Yeah. So. The, the real question then is, um, can we take all of this data and all of this information and somehow use it to actually uh, create a piece? And so we've actually done that. We've created um, pieces like stem cells 
and in stem cells, the, the performer actually has to go take their body and their mind through a whole stage of emotional states, from happy to sad to scared to whatever, and then create sounds and music from that. We're the Music and Sensors and Emotion Group up at the Sonic Arts Research Center. Um, please check out our website, and if you're interested in any of the research, um, also go by the Science Gallery and check out what we're doing over there as well. So thank you very much. Thank you.